Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm not far from my door, and I'm in my backyard here where I've got hundreds and hundreds of flowers coming up in my lawn. This is one of my favorite habitats. I love the lawn habitat because you can find 20 or 30 different species on the average lawn that doesn't have herbicides put on there. And the part that fascinates me most is the ethnobotany behind many of these plants. Ethnobotany is about the history of the plant with human cultures. And so many of these plants that are grown here on the lawn have an extensive history of use dating back sometimes thousands of years. And here in the Americas, they were used by indigenous peoples and later by the settlers to the United States. Culturally, we seem to be out of touch with the plants around us. So I wanna tell the story of this particular plant today. This is part of an ongoing series I'm doing on the plants that you can find around your house, in a local park, or in a local natural area. As they come up and as they flower, I think you'll be seeing them. So I want to tell you the story about them. Today's episode is specifically on the violets. I'm going to tell you five fascinating facts about these violets. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this basic. There's a top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So, fact number one violets come in an amazing variety of colors. There's blues, purples, purple and white, whites, and even yellows, depending on the species. The species that I have growing here, I think is most likely Viola sororia. And the word sororia means sisters. So many of these species of violets hybridize People have tried to put them into categories and species, but it's been a very frustrating thing to try to do it and to identify them because they come in so many different forms. Violets will bloom primarily from March to June, so they're a very early blooming plant. They're perennials, so they'll grow up in the same place year after year. And I was looking forward to this explosion of color in my lawn today. Fascinating fact number two. Violets have been used for thousands of years as food. Here in the Americas, the indigenous peoples ate them as well as the early settlers. They were especially important to the early settlers who had just gotten through the winter subsisting on dried meats and beans to find this amazing vegetable growing all around that was very high in vitamin A and vitamin C, some vitamins they're very much in the need of. The leaves and flowers are edible and not to be confused with African violets which are not edible and can be very, very toxic. And again, I need to throw in a disclaimer. I'm a scientist and a reporter of things that I learn. I'm not a practicing forager. And if you want to learn about how to eat these things and how to prepare them, check out some other websites and books and local people that will be the experts for you to share on that. These plants were eaten very commonly and are still eaten by a lot of people today. The leaves can be eaten in salads or served up like a spinach or put in stews. The flowers have been used to make syrups, jellies, and even candies. You can even make a blue colored tea or cold drink from steeping the flowers in water. Amazing fact number three. Violets have a history of being used in medicine. And this dates back a long ago. But I'm particularly interested in the uses by the indigenous peoples. Like the Cherokee Indians used violets for everything from cough suppressant to treating colds to treating headache. So scientists have taken extracts from the violets and found they contain salicylic acid which is a precursor to aspirin. So it's similar in use as the Cherokees that used the black willow and chewed on the bark because it is particularly rich in salicylic acid. The leaves of this plant are also 
known to carry an antioxidant. So there's a lot of health uses to this plant, even today. Amazing fact number four. Most of this plant's seed production, and you can see how prolific it is, is not from the flowers, but a special kind of flower that comes after the visible flowering season with the bright colors. The violet produces these small flowers near the ground that never open. They're called cleistogamous flowers. Cleisto means closed. Gammy means marriage, so it's like closed marriage. So these seeds are not pollinated and don't undergo sexual reproduction as the seeds that are produced in the flowers, but they produce lots and lots of seeds. They're also helped spread by ants. The seeds also have an aliosome attached to them, which is a nutritious bit of fatty or protein-rich nutrition that the ants want. And so they come and take the seeds, eat that part, and discard the seeds so the seeds are spread much like they are in the bloodroot flower. Fascinating fact number five. In the Americas today, there's a movement towards planting a lot of native species or encouraging native species to grow in your yard. One of the benefits of the native species is that there are certain animals and plants that are associated with them that they benefit. For example, the leaves are the choice of fritillary butterflies. So by keeping violets in your yard, you're encouraging and helping the fritillary butterfly population. This is also good food for a lot of different kinds of grazers, including wild turkey and deer and rabbits and even mice that will eat various parts of the plant and eat its seeds. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. I love sharing about these plants that you can find here in a lawn. And I love following what's flowering in the spring and sharing that with you because I think you're going to see the same plants that I do. And here I'll give you a key to identifying them and learning about them, learning about their unique biology and also their ethnobotany how these plants were used by peoples before us. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like, and I love hearing from my viewers. Leave me a comment or a question, and I'll get back to you as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. Till the next video.